Now, we're in Money's On after us at nine. I wonder if he's got any of these up his sleeve this morning. Well, if you weren't awake, you certainly are now. Uh, because according to the first study of its kind, heavy metal fans behave uh, the same way with each other at concerts. Check this out. As members of a remote rainforest tribe the etiquette of so-called mosh pits even though it might seem like unorganized chaos apparently mirrors 40,000 year old rituals from Papua New Guinea and they're passed down from generation to generation of rockers <laughs> well let's speak to Lindsay Bishop now this sounds fascinating <laughs> Lindsay's an anthropologist from the University College London and is the author of this research morning to you Lindsay Good morning. This is fascinating but what is intriguing me more is what made you want to study this in the first place? Um, well, to be honest, I am a I am a heavy metal fan for my entire life, um, and it was only when I converted to anthropology for my masters that I, um, I started seeing sort of uh, patterns of behaviour uh, and links when they were teaching me the traditional anthropological texts, and an awful lot of them are from Papua New Guinea, uh, and it just seemed to there seemed to be more similarities there the uh, the meaning of the music and the performance to people. Uh, that I that I'd been aware of for all these years than than what um, the subcultural texts I've been reading in, in university prior had said about it. So you were able to kind of combine what was a a, a a personal love and a hobby with your kind of academic research. How did you actually go ab- about this then? I mean, it presumably you had to observe uh, the behaviour of, of 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 people in a mosh pit, and 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 it can get quite hands on there, can't it? <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. Uh, I, I've i gone on tour with uh, several bands around the UK and Europe. Um, so on various bus, like the, I'm very lucky to have had a tour bus occasionally, um, splitter vans, and sometimes it's just friends uh, in a car uh, riding up the motorway. And uh, what I do is um, I photograph and record a lot of the, the performances um, just to, because I'm struggling to try and describe what a mosh pit is to people. So the best I can do is, is uh, try and show you visually. Um, and yeah, I just, um, I get into the thick of it or I, I film from a balcony. And that that's the point. Um, if you're even just outside a mosh pit, you're not going to get sucked into it. It's very, it is quite controlled. The chaos is controlled. And so even with camera equipment, I'm I'm perfectly safe. And that that's that's really interesting, isn't it? Because I think it, to anyone who's not ever been in a mosh pit, you you assume it's just complete chaos there. Absolutely, um, and and to be honest, a lot of the people I've spoken to, um, when they because everyone's got the story of their first mosh pit, generally speaking, and um, they didn't know what it was about either. And this is the interesting uh, dynamic where. Um, the older generations are teaching the younger generations. Uh, there's this communication. It's not just teenage boys in these crowds. There's a communication with the different generations that teach you how to behave, essentially. You know, um, you only engage with the people within this sort of circled area in the crowd, which is the mosh pit. Um, if someone falls down, you pick them up. If you hit accidentally hit someone too hard, you take them to the bar and get them a drink and make sure they're okay. And you know, uh, fast friends have been made um, in the mosh pit. You know, it's um, everyone's got their story. And the, the, this is the kind of ritualistic element that you are able to draw connections with Papua New Guinea with, is it? Yes. Um, yeah, the, the, the sort of intergenerational communication, especially, was. Um, it's not really been recognised so far. I mean, it's it's quite obvious if you're in heavy metal, if you you know if you're uh, uh, into the, the mosh pits itself. What I'm saying isn't actually very shocking, but the um, the fact that it's not really been recognised um, in sort of academia and literature is um, is quite shocking to me. And also, I think there's a real um, habit of people just you know focusing on the accidents that happen in the tragedies and I think there's so much more to be celebrated with this culture than you know the the rare and um and tragic events that occasionally happen uh, which happen at any show let's face it with thousands of people 
Lindsay, thanks so much for speaking to us this morning. Uh, interested to see what, what your next project might be. <laughs> thanks ever so much. Lindsay Bishop there, who's an anthropologist at the University College of London. 8.32. This is Good Morning Wales. With Kaylee Thomas and Peter Johnson. On BBC Radio Wales.